On this week's Carry Rack, we speak with Route Metrics to get some insight into the company's increasingly important network testing methodology. Thanks for joining us in this week's Carrier Wrap. Uh, I'm your host, Dan Meyer, Editor-in-Chief at RCR Wireless News. Well, few would argue the competitive nature of the domestic mobile space, especially among the nation's four largest operators. Much of this is played out in the marketing world, where it seems not a minute goes by without an advertisement from one of the big four touting their network superiority, superiority in one form or another. Central to many of these claims are network tests conducted by third-party providers that use various methodologies to garner insight into network capabilities and coverage. One of the more cited firms is Metrics which over the past few years has grown its testing operations into a robust platform, both domestically and increasingly overseas. We recently had a chance to speak with Julie Day, who's the VP at Rootmetrics, to get an overview of the company, gain some insight into its testing methodology, and challenges the company has faced as it has become a growing source of data for carrier differentiation and consumer insight. Well, thanks everyone for joining us this week. Uh, my name is Dan Meyer, I'm Editor-in-Chief at RCR Wireless News, and today we are joined by Julie Day, who's the uh, VP, VP at uh, Root Metrics to talk a bit about uh, the company and the uh, increasing, I guess, usage perhaps and importance of what Root Metrics does to the wireless industry. So, uh, Julie, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Good to be here. Great. Well, maybe start off with for those who don't know uh, much about Root Metrics or who don't, who don't own a TV or uh, haven't seen any of the commercials lately uh, touting Root Metrics, uh, perhaps get a little overview of, of the company for us. Sure. We have been around for a while now, since 2008. And our primary function is to collect data on the performance of mobile networks. And we do that here in the U.S., also in the U.K., and as of last month, uh, now in Spain. So we are definitely expanding our operations worldwide. Um, but our, our primary focus is to look at the performance of mobile networks from the consumer's point of view. And so from that, what I mean is how consumers really experience the network in kind of everyday life. So when we go out and we test, we don't factor out the things that have impact, like the weather or crowds or what device people are using or the kinds of, you know, we want to make sure that with consumer focus, we are um, thinking about the kinds of performance and activities that consumers use. So with our testing, we actually make calls, we send emails, we send and receive texts and, uh, you know, look at all those things to try and come up with an easy to compare um, tool, which we call a root score. I mean, we take all of those tests that we collect out there, um, synthesize them into a root score for easy apples to apples comparison of one network to the other. And um, as of last year, we were acquired by IHS, a company based out of Denver, mm -hmm. which is a very large uh, global information uh, and data company. So it's nice to have the, the backing of a company that's, that does that and has done that for a long time. Very good. Well, yeah, now you kind of touched a bit about a, a bit on the method, methodology of what you guys do, hard for me to say. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I guess can you give a little more detail? I mean, do you guys actually use sure. uh, smartphones out there, right? I mean, you're driving around with smartphones and, and testing everything out as, as, like you said, as customers would actually be using uh, their devices then. Right. So we actually do go to carrier stores and we buy smartphones right off the shelf and we have access to the same phones that everybody else does. We don't get special treatment or special access to phones that are not on the market. Uh, so we're looking at phones that are the latest and greatest with technology. And we actually, before every six months period of testing, we test twice a year, um, before every period of testing, we go out and we benchmark several devices for each carrier and we choose one device for each carrier that shows the carrier in the best light and helps to make sure that the device doesn't inversely impact the results of what our, our testing shows. And so, like I said, we will go out and we will, you know, perform tests on calls and data and text, but we're doing those in all kinds of places. So we uh, measure in 125 different metro markets in the US, all 50 states, um, and that helps us to look at the performance across the entire country. But we're also testing in airports and in venues and other places where consumers um, you know, might like to see where, consumer, uh, where mobile performance differs. Um, and so we, you know, we take all of that data that we collect, we drive around uh, quite a bit, but we also do quite a bit of testing indoors. So we'll take our uh, standard kit, which has every single, you know, has one unique device for every carrier. 
And we'll take those kits and we'll walk inside of, you know, say a Starbucks or a grocery store or something like that. And we will walk around. And it's really interesting that, you know, to have that sort of indoor perspective and compare what differences that you'd see and expect from um, how your, your phone performs indoor versus what it's like outdoor without the, you know, kind of concrete walls and things like that that have, uh, you know, barriers and impacts on performance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anybody who's ever seen any of the results you guys have put out, uh, it is quite extensive and it's quite uh, impressive when you read through how you guys actually uh, come up with all this information, or not come up with it, but how you actually in get all the information because it does seem like it's almost, it's almost like impossible to think of you guys actually out there doing all this testing and, and everything. It's just, it's an amazing amount of data you guys collect and the way you do it indoors, outdoors, different environments. Uh, again, it's, it's an impressive feat and it seems to really kind of uh, showcase, uh, you know, kind of the, the importance that this is really becoming for the market because it does seem like operators, their networks are becoming, they're all becoming, for the most part, really good. I mean, they're improving on a daily basis. Uh, so it's really hard to kind of, you know, kind of go through and, and with a fine tooth comb almost to kind of see where the differences really are with everybody. And it seems like you guys are able to kind of really parse out, you know, where there are improvements, where some carriers are better indoors or outdoors. And uh, again, a lot of the operators I know uh, use this information for their own marketing tools. And uh, it seems like that this has become a very important part of it. I mean, has that impacted at all how you guys view when you guys go out there to do these things? Because it does seem like it's become, uh, you know, almost larger than life, really, the importance of these of these numbers, really. Right. It, it doesn't have a, a, an impact in what we do from the perspective of how we decide what to test, when to test, how to test. We're an independent uh, performance and data collector. So we decide what to do, um, when we do it, and, and all that kind of good stuff. But we do look at the entire environment of mobile performance. So we do consider what are carriers marketing, what kinds of technologies do they find are important, what do consumers need from their devices and from their network, how has consumer technology changed, how are they using their phones, things like that. All of those factors go into our consideration set for development of the different kinds of tests we do and the different kinds of methodology we might employ. Like, for example, when we first started testing, we were only uh, conducting call tests and just a kind of rudimentary data throughput test. And over time, uh, we've added email testing, a web app test, more intense um, testing on the text and SMS messaging side. And again, as, as technology changes, we'll add more to our testing suite, for example. In this first half of 2016, we've started testing voice over LTE, which is a newer technology that hasn't been as you know, pro, um, you know, pervasive yeah. for consumers yet. Yeah, it makes sense. And, not, and, and again, you guys have done a lot of international expansion, too. I think it was the past year or two. We went to the UK, uh, some Canadian work as well. Yes. Uh, now in Spain, like you said, uh, I guess what goes into your kind of as you guys view expansion like that, you know, do you guys look at certain markets? Uh, what kind of goes into your decision making as to where to go and, and sure. why to go to those markets? We kind of have our eye everywhere okay. on what looks interesting and, and where the opportunities might be. There's, uh, we actually have a pretty significant uh, filter system that we have, you know, created internally around that, that includes hundreds of different factors of why we would you know, look at one place over another. But we tend to look at you know, consumer need. Mm -hmm. um, do consumers use, you know, are they heavily, um, you know, are they heavy self, uh, smartphone users? Um, how advanced is the technology in a particular country? Mm -hmm. What kinds of carriers are there? Is it more government run versus kind of an independent um, you know, situation? And so we, we look at all of those factors and then kind of you know, make an assessment of what our opportunities are in those markets. Yeah, it makes sense. And again, like you said too, you guys are using a lot more uh, kind of, you know, again, smartphones are, are being used for everything nowadays. So you guys are obviously testing a lot more and more. I remember uh, the first time I think I met with Root Metrics, I think it was in 2009, I think it was at a trade show. And, you know, back then, I think we discussed, you know, you know, just doing voice and messaging was kind of the big thing. Right. And data wasn't, yeah, like you said, data was kind of just becoming part of it. But but even hearing what you guys were thinking about doing back then, it was a very unique, uh, you know, perspective and, and kind of looking at different things. Uh, it seems like, though, that you guys have really uh, found a model. And obviously, you know, there's some uh, copycats out there or other ones trying to mimic what you guys do as well. But you guys seem to have really found a good niche, it seems like, just, again, with the, with the growth of smartphones. Uh, really what you guys are offering seems to be uh, really hitting a, hitting a market that's really uh, really in need out there. We hope so. I mean, I think that as evidenced, as you referenced the, you know, a lot of the you know, commercials that we've been seeing yeah. lately, it's a highly, highly competitive market, especially here in the United States. 
And one of the you know things that we felt like as a business that we wanted to help with is that as a consumer, it's very confusing to hear all of these different messages coming at you and try to make sense of it. So but that, that was one of our goals in creating a root score award was to try and help identify, look, you know, we have done really deep and thorough testing as an independent party to determine where performance is strong and maybe where it's less strong so that a consumer could look at an unbiased source and say, okay, well, that makes sense for me. But it's not just looking at it at the award level. Uh, you know, again, one of the reasons that we have all those different dimensions of performance is because consumers use their phones in different ways. If you're a teenager and all you care about is texting and you're, you know, the parents care about having a, a family plan that has X amount of data in it and all this kind of stuff, um, you can look at data performance, text performance, call performance, and then even like as a layer on top of that, um, we met, we look at overall, how does a carrier perform um, across the entire network for speed and reliability? So these are all factors that are important to people in different ways. Yeah. And you can use all those different facets and categories of information that we provide to make a decision that's best for you. So even if, you know, say Verizon, as we rated in our last um, national report, was number one in the United States, that might not matter to you if you live in X city and X block and what you care about is call performance, a different carrier might be better for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting point too, because I mean the, the information you guys provide it, it is very detailed. I mean, I think on the commercials we see all the big, you know, nationwide maps and you see the different colors here and there, uh, which have become more and more popular with commercials. But really you can really dig down into the information and really get almost like a street by street uh, level uh, score on kind of where people, you know, where areas have good coverage, where they don't have good coverage. Uh, it seems like the detail of your of your mapping or of your of your research is really an impressive part of this because that seems to be uh, again the important stuff, like you said, people might not care you know, how their phone might work in New York City if they never go to New York City. Uh, so if you can, you know, they can really kind of look where it works best for them and uh, make a more informed decision for themselves as well. We have what we call a, a nation to neighborhood approach. So you can look at it, you know, performance on a national level if that's important to you. And certainly it is for a lot of people who travel often and are, you know, in a bunch of different places yeah. uh, over the course of time. But then, you know, that we also kind of narrow it down region by region. So you go from nation to state to metro to say either an airport or a venue, but even as you can see on our coverage maps on the website, yeah. we have information down at a very specific um, kind of block-like level. So it's about a 110 meter, um, you know, piece of space. Yeah. And so you can look at very specific detailed uh, performance information. And what I, you know, when I tell people about what I do or where I work, I always encourage them to go to the maps and to read the reports because just because um, you know a carrier looks good at a broad level, it yeah. might not be so great at that micro level of what's important to you. Yeah. And so it's very personal and it's very important that you do the research to um, determine what carrier is best for you based on where you are. I'm sure you've heard many, many stories from friends and colleagues about, oh, I went with carrier X and then I got home and it just doesn't work in this corner of my house. And so we want to try and help as much as we can to prevent uh, situations like that, which ultimately, you know, benefits the industry because you're going to have less churn and more people who are satisfied because they're making the right decision in the first place. Makes sense. And, and I guess that at some point we should be expecting knocks on the door from the root metric people coming coming into your house to kind of measure different areas of your house at some point too. That'll that'll be an expansion for later, I'm guessing, for you guys. Sure, we'll be right there. <laughs> well, I guess you know, again, you guys again have been been doing this for several years now. Has there been anything that's kind of surprised you? Uh, from your testing, you know, that has shown maybe in terms of how the uh, how networks have kind of evolved and how coverage has evolved, whether it's data or messaging, has anything kind of you know struck struck you as kind of being interesting as as this kind of has evolved over over the past several years? That's been the I think the fun part of doing this for as long as we have because the technology changes constantly, and so it's never the same, and you never know exactly what to expect. I think part of what's surprising is that you know we, we have this combination of crowd and and uh, kind of uh, scientific testing. Yeah. The scientific testing is what goes into our reports, but we do have an app with crowd data that goes into our maps. So our maps are crowd and scientific collection. Um, but crowd data will tell us really interesting information about where new technology is kind of lighting up. So we can see the presence or absence of, of a technology in a lot of different places across the country. Um, but um, I, I think what's surprising is when we do start to see those things lighting up and we hear carriers messaging, well, we've got this great new technology, it's going to change your life. Um, whether or not we see the benefits <laughs> of that or how quickly we do, I think is always a surprise. 
Um, sometimes it's much faster than we expected and sometimes it's not. But usually we kind of see a pattern of a new technology will roll out and we'll see, sometimes we'll even see like a dip in performance. I mean, that certainly happened with LTE as, you know, people were, more and more people were using that technology that, you know, usage of it yeah. impacted performance. But then, you know, it smooths out and then you start to see kind of a ramp up usually of much stronger performance, which is ultimately better in the long run. But sometimes it takes a little while to get there and it's always surprising at, at how short or how long that might take. And it seems like too, I mean, maybe from my own point of view, but it does seem like this kind of testing that you guys do and maybe other companies as well, it, it does kind of force operators to perhaps be maybe a little more aggressive in their uh, building out of networks because, again, they can announce something. Uh, but then if you look at the maps, you know, a short time later, if you're not seeing that service in areas and customers can be like, well, wait a minute, I thought you had this service out there. And so it almost seems like it's kind of, you know, keeping carriers on their toes in terms of, you know, if you're announcing a technology or a service, it kind of has to be out there because otherwise, you know, we'll see if it's not out there because the maps, you know, the will the, show whether, you're, you know, you actually have the service in these markets like you said you did. Well, that was actually one of the um, primary factors in the decision to start this company, actually. Um, so some of the founders noticed that when they would look at different carrier websites, they would see that there were all these beautiful coverage maps <laughs> of where performance uh, was available. And their experience was not necessarily true of what the maps reflected. And so there was this gap between kind of a theoretical propagation of where coverage should be yeah. versus what actual performance really was. And so we really aim to get down to that difference between what is promised and what we see as, you know, to some level reality and hopefully be transparent about that um, to consumers and give them the tools and information that they need to make sure that they're making the best decisions about mobile performance. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I think exactly. I mean, again, those, those legacy kind of maps, they were basically, like you said, kind of used, you know, if someone owns spectrum in a certain area, uh, you would just kind of do a quick model of, you know, propagation of that spectrum and where it would look like. And so, yeah, you're right. The, the early maps that we've always were kind of used to, uh, were, like you said, were kind of just big blobs of, of, of color uh, somewhere. And you just assume that you had coverage there. And, you know, obviously I'm, I'm kind of in the west of the United States. And uh, so, you know, out here we have lots of open areas and mountains and stuff. And so uh, you see a big blob of coverage uh, over a certain area and you, you go there and obviously you wouldn't have any coverage. Uh, so yeah, it does seem like you guys have been able to kind of really, you know, bring some more legitimacy to uh, to those coverage maps and kind of, again, force force the carriers to be a little more uh, authentic in what they're uh, representing out there to consumers. So uh, that's a big part too. Yeah, we hope so. Um, and, but it, it's been, like I said, it's been a, a fun time, especially in, in the last year and a half with how rapidly things are changing. Sure. And it's certainly interesting for us to see the impact and the progress <laughs> that each of those carriers are making, Sprint and T-Mobile in particular, yeah. because they've had you know a longer way to go. Um, to see how quickly they're able to update, roll out new technologies and, um, you know, create a better network for their customers. Yeah, and that's something people, you know, if you look through the history of your of your root metric uh, scores, you know, obviously, you know, the past few years, Verizon and AT&T have always been kind of at the top of them for the most part. But it, it, it is interesting to kind of see the evolution of, of like you said, T-Mobile and Sprint and their coverage. I mean, obviously, they've been going through a lot of different network evolutions themselves. And so they've been doing a lot of work there, uh, but to kind of see how they've improved in areas and, you know, kind of caught, gotten closer and closer to uh, the, the big two in certain areas, at least in certain aspects. Uh, it's, a, it's definitely interesting to kind of go back and kind of see that evolution. It's again, great insight that you guys provide in, in those topics too. One of the things that we look at uh, every half is um, we, we call it data speed sort of distribution buckets. Yeah. And so we'll look at across 125 metros, what was the median download throughput speed that we observed for each carrier in those markets. Mm -hmm. And there has been a really, really nice shift um, from Sprint and T-Mobile to get out of those lower median speeds towards much faster speeds. And T-Mobile in particular is really doing a good job of pushing more markets into those really, really fast speeds. Um, but uh, Verizon is also doing that as well. And so they are very competitive at the top end of speeds. But, um, you know, something that we like to try and communicate to consumers and try to help make people aware of is it's pretty awesome if you have a speed of 25 or 30 megabits per second in a marketplace. But depending on how you use your phone and what kinds of services you're using, that, that kind of speed might not be necessary. You might be just fine with seven or eight megabits per second. Um, depending on you know what you're doing. If you're just checking email or checking Facebook and Twitter and things like that, those lower speeds are more than adequate. 
But if you are doing heavy streaming and lots of Skype and you know Netflix and, and some of those types of services, then certainly you want to look at carriers that offer a much higher uh, data speed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And again, it does, it does seem like too that uh, the importance of this is just growing more and more. And, and again, like you said, I mean, as you mentioned, it is uh, the past year, so it's been pretty exciting to watch all this. And obviously, uh, whenever you guys put out some new information, it does seem to generate uh, some social media commentary as well from various people, which is always fun to watch as well. But it just kind of shows also that uh, the importance of what's being put out there. I mean, you know, some people might not agree with, you know, with perhaps your and uh, in, in maybe what you guys are coming up with as a, as a result. Uh, but it's hard to argue with the numbers because, again, you guys do offer such a depth of numbers. I mean, if you're a numbers nerd, looking at one of your reports is just like, I mean, that's a whole weekend right there. You can just sit there and just, right. just pour numbers over yourself and just go crazy with it because you guys provide so much detail that you can really dig into. I mean, it's hard to argue uh, with what you guys are coming up with as your result uh, when you look at kind of how you get there, which is, I think, an important, it seems like an important aspect of what you guys are providing. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, yes, we believe in transparency yeah. results. Uh, so we want to share that information. We want to show what we see. We, you know, on some level, the, the root scores can be an abstract concept, but the idea is that we are taking a lot of complex KPIs and detailed metrics that we're collecting in the marketplace. We're synthesizing that information back here, um, you know, at the home office. Yeah and creating through analysis and scientific rigor a way to make all that complex data very very simple into yeah. a score and so that's what the root score is and then you've got the ranks which are you know allow you to compare one thing to another but we do try to go deeper into that and try and help consumers and the industry understand what goes behind those ranks or that score and the performance how come sprint is number one in this market and verizon is number one in that market well it's because of this call performance or this data speed or how how fast they're sending texts and all of those types of things. But one of the things that you, you mentioned before was that the um, you know performance generally is, is pretty good for all four carriers. And I would definitely echo that sentiment. I mean, there, there are not very many places that we see ever um, in the United States, at least, where performance is really you know subpar. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just a testament to the competitiveness of the environment right now and how fast and rapidly the carriers are deploying new technology, but also maintaining that, which is great for consumers because they you know will benefit from all of that. But um, you know, so we don't want to make too much all the time of the differences between a number one and a number four rank because depending on, what the market is and what the factors are, that may not be, you know, a, a big difference. And four might not be bad per yeah. se. It's just not quite as strong as number one. Sure. So there's, sure. there's a lot of nuance in the numbers and a, and a lot of detail that goes on behind it. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, maybe as a final wrap-up question, I think you already kind of mentioned you guys are going to start doing some more testing this year uh, on Volte, for instance. Uh, I guess as you guys look forward a little bit, I mean, what what is your kind of your plan, your evolution? I mean, obviously, you know, data is just becoming more and more important. There's more uh, carrier aggregation going out there where carriers are combining spectrum to provide better speeds. Uh, coverage seems to be getting better with operators, you know, using lower band spectrum to, to improve coverage. Uh, I guess as you guys look forward a little bit, I mean, what, what do you guys expect to maybe change or alter or what do you guys expect to see in your results uh, going going forward this year? Well, we always perform tests on new technology before we actually roll out testing that will include that new technology because we certainly don't want our testing to um, adversely impact or, or bias the results yeah. that we see. So it's interesting to think about all those new technologies that are rolling out. And I don't think that like at this moment that we particularly have expectations of that um, per se, sure. but it's always interesting to see how much those things change or don't change, especially given how, how much those new technologies are being promoted or not promoted um, for specific carriers. Um, you know, carrier aggregation has been a, a really positive thing um, in the industry and it's something that we've really seen help drive uh, better performance. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I, I guess, does it, do, I mean, these things probably, you know, also keep you on your toes a bit because you have to obviously have the, the latest devices and always have to be, kind of be yes. on top of what's what's coming out next too. So I'm sure for you guys, whenever there's a new technology, it just requires, you know, more uh, more trips to the store to pick up new devices and, and things like that as well. As much as we are testing out in the field, we are doing almost equally that number uh, of testing with hours and people and manpower back here at the home office and out here locally in the field to test new technology, new software. I mean, we have to think about things like when Android releases, um, you know, a, a new piece of firmware yeah. or, um, you know, 
some some new piece of that equation changes, yeah. we have to test every single facet to make sure that it's not, again, adversely impacting our testing. So we do uh, quite a lot of testing back here before we roll out the test into prime time, if you will. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, again, well, Julie, definitely appreciate the great insight on this. Obviously, uh, you guys have been uh, seen, seen remarkable growth over the past several years, and it seems like uh, what you guys are offering to the market is is a, a service that is not going to be lessing at all. It, it seems like carriers are, are more and more uh, touting these numbers and it's becoming more a bigger part of the, uh, the, of the general conversation uh, when it comes to wireless service. So uh, I think you guys have uh, quite a bit of work ahead of you as well. So, But we definitely appreciate the great insight and, and on the topic today. Thanks so much for the, for the time today. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Thanks. Well, that'll do it for this week's show. Make sure to check us out again next week when we have news and insight from the CCA Mobile Carrier Show. Thanks for watching.